Good morning, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be a live trade video where I try to capture some of my trades as they play out live. Market opens up here in about 10 minutes. Real quick, if you're new to these videos, when I say live, what I mean is that this is not a situation where everything has already been recorded and now I'm coming back and doing a voiceover or some sort of post commentary. Nothing like that. I'm recording myself, seeing the information for or the very first time. So if you want raw thoughts, raw reactions, and all that good stuff, then uh, you will get that here. If you're looking for a, a well-edited video, nicely scripted, that, that'll not be happening here. But if you want just the nitty gritty look into what it's like to be a day trader, how day trading can play out, then uh, like I said, you will you will get that here. As of right now, planning on watching ACRS out of the opening gates. Again, I say planning on because because these are live. I don't know, maybe some other ticker symbol pops up beforehand that catches my attention, but that is a plan as of now. And uh, I'll be back at the open, so I'll go ahead and pause for now. All right, I have an order at 1545 to get short, opening 500 shares. In there, out, wow, all right. In and out as fast as I could click the buttons. So that was quite literally $75 in less than a second. As soon as I got in, I scrolled the cursor down to click uh, buy to cover. And wow, well, I get it. Clay, why don't you hold? Well, that wasn't the strategy. The strategy was a building strategy, uh, which just doesn't, uh, in hindsight, yeah, I definitely should have held. I nailed the top by five cents. Problem is that's hindsight, right? At, the, at that time, I didn't know it was five cents. And in my mind, I'll, I'll take $75 in a matter of you know one second, quite literally. So, all right, nice start to the morning here. Let's see it all second find. I'll go ahead and pause. Assuming I was even recording that. Was I recording? Okay, good. I was. All right. I'll go ahead and pause. Watching 1475 here. Potential break. On ACRS. We'll see if it can work its uh, work itself back up there or not. But that's the current stock and price level I'm eyeballing. But... I'll go ahead and pause. All right, I'm watching 13.35 here. And if it is broken, I'll look to go, or excuse me, go short. So 13.35, you can see you got this alert in the community there. Just how it's a very well-defined area. but want to see confirmation that it's actually broken. So 1335 is the mark, but I want to see it broken. So I'm willing to, to get in as low as 1325. But first the price has got to get down there. So that's the current plan. Okay, watching. All right, I'll go ahead and pause. And that's why it's always important for confirmation because just that fast, Big green candle to the upside here. What is that low? 1388. Maybe up my, we'll see what kind of kind of candle forms right here. Uh, as of right now, well, there you go. Low of 1388, yeah. I'll go, if 1388 can be broken on this candle that is, then I would be interested in shorting, but it's not looking like 1388 is gonna be coming into play. If anything, is this thing getting ready to break back above $15 at this point? Wow, what a turnaround. It's a nice little lesson there on why confirmation can be very, very important. All right, well, I'm not. I'm no longer gonna take that level down there at the 5th, uh, 1388 level. Um, I just don't trust this one from the, from the long side, which is why I would be interested in potentially shorting again like I did that first trade. Let's try 1545 again. It's not close right now, but if it wants to shoot up there quickly, that could be another nice little 
scalp location. But again, I, I just don't trust this one from the long side. Maybe I'm silly for doing that, but because I don't trust it from the long side, well then logic would dictate, well then you would trust it from the short side, which is why I'm trying to go short here. But like I said, it's gotta first get up to, to 1545. All right, I'll go ahead and pause. Okay, up over 15. Nope, hesitating too much. So let's go to 1585. Nice. All out there, but I got to stop talking. 16.45. So it took a quick, uh, what was that? $125 in a matter of seconds. You can scroll back and watch that again. Let's see if I can start the process over again. Again, I'm at 16.45 here. So the key break needs to be 16. Now, ideally, I'd, I'd like more than 500 shares, but I'm not gonna turn around these, these fast, fast gains. Like I said, scroll back, and I made that $125 in literally seconds. Literally seconds. Again, I'm at 16.45. Can it break back over 16? Well, pulling back a little bit now, so I'll go ahead and pause. All right, now the price is up over 16. I'm at 1685 now, I've adjusted. How high did it actually go? 1642. That might be a fake break out there, so I'm watching 1550 quite closely. In at 1569 short, I think this thing was a fake breakout here. Again, in at 1569. See, what is that low? 1590. Comes back down to 1590, I'm gonna add. Like I said, I think this is just a fake break out here. Might actually get a better entry point. Watching 1590. Yeah, I'm watching it very closely. Fifteen ninety. In there at 1590 for another 500, that is. Let's see if this thing can get back down to that area. Looking like 16 is gonna be that key break now. Yep, 16, definitely being very stubborn. There's the break. All out there for, oh shoot, shoot. Didn't mean to click that. I thought I had 1500 shares. I thought I had added once again in the process. I'm 
well, it is what it is. You know, there's a there's a, a plus and downside to uh, watching, or I should say, not watching your PNL. Uh, your PNL being this information down here. Uh, some sometimes not real. In my opinion, I think all the time you should just focus on the chart. You should focus on what you're seeing, what you what your bias is, what your thought process is. Because uh, for me, at least, when I start to see those numbers flashing back and forth, it can freak me out. It can make me think, oh, oh. But in all actuality, the, 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 the stock's not doing anything wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's jumping around, but that's what stocks do. They jump around, but it's not actually doing anything wrong relative to your overall premise, your overall thought process going in. Uh, but it can play games with me. But the downside to that is uh, sometimes, because uh, for those who are not familiar, my position is right here. So if I'm watching all the numbers flick back and forth, flicking back and forth, and then it's, you know, okay, yeah, and I have X amount of shares. But in this case, since I wasn't watching it, I thought I'd add it again. I thought I was at the 1500 share mark. I don't know why. I guess that's just kind of maybe the downside of doing these live videos where I'm trying to talk, think for myself, uh, think what I'm gonna say to you, actually talk to you, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I, I still, I, I'm still, in fact, maybe I, I could probably take another at 1550. But I don't know, this might be a revenge trade right now. So I gotta be, I gotta be very careful that I'm not just hop, not hopping in here. But anyways, that was, uh, yeah, shoot. Yeah, 1550 might have worked out. But like I said, I, 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 don't, I, I didn't know if that was true or if that was just a revenge trade, but it is what it is, $290, I'll take it. And I, I'm still, I'm not gonna change anything up. I'm, I, you know, like I said, I don't watch the P&L flick back and forth. That just happens to be where my position size is also. Uh, but um, thought I had 1500, took myself completely out. Oh, GME pulling back here though. Oh my, all right, okay, let's, uh, what is that? 38, gap close, uh, yeah, all right. 37.85. Maybe I'm being too much of a greedy savage thinking it can get all the way down there. Let me double check that. Yeah, I like 37.85 quite a bit. Try to play this pullback. It's 10.03, I, I, I kind of want to be done by now. Not kind of, I do want to be done, but uh, seeing this, this is quite the pullback here. All right, well, maybe one more trade if uh, GME wants to continue to pull back here. Uh, I'll keep you updated. And just ending to uh, kind of give the, the rest of the story as embarrassing as it is. Yeah, I was totally right to have been bearish biased that whole time. Uh, now granted, don't get me wrong, and this is another good example. I was saying this whole time, I didn't trust any breakouts. I didn't trust any breakouts. To be fair though, I, I, I was wrong in that sense because I could have trusted, I mean, that was a very nice breakout, boom, up to there. But guess what? I still made money on the stock from the short side. So that just goes to show that you can, you, people can be making money from both sides of the market. People can be making money from the short side and the long side. And I guarantee you that there's people making money, you know, even in my own community on the long side there. And there I was making money on the short side. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not like one of these penny stocks where it's a game of musical chairs because there's barely enough volume and you gotta hurry up and sell before the other guy does or else you might not get out before the whole entire stock crashes. Nothing like that. That's, that's why when you focus on LAC, what's going on with LAC? All right. Let me get that alerted here, break out here, one minute. Look at that tight little range. What level it just broken there, that $25 mark. Is that even, no, okay, well, got the breakout. But anyways, like I said, when you have the, uh, you know, depending on the stock, if you're, you know, these penny stock chat rooms, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bad mouth anybody. I'm just saying that it's definitely a, a very different dynamic when you have lower volume situations where it's literally a game of musical chairs and the whole got, goal is I got to buy, but I got to hurry up and sell to somebody else uh, before the volume just disappears. And not, I don't want to become a bag holder and get stuck. But good example there of here I am talking the whole time in ACRS about thinking, yeah, I don't trust the breakout. I don't trust the breakout. And I was wrong, it broke out very nicely. Uh, but then because I, again, didn't trust the breakout, didn't think it really had that much long, you know, long lasting uh, strength behind it. Could have been, a, you know, yeah. I'm not saying I would have, you know, sold the bottom there, but that was still a very nice move. But anyways, all right, well, it is 10.06. I am gonna wrap things up. Uh, for those of you that are maybe new, my motto, my uh, kind of game plan, 
uh, is the be done in 30 approach. Uh, trading is a side hustle for me. And be done in 30 means I want to be done on average 30 minutes uh, every every day. Now, sometimes it'll be a little bit longer like today. Other times it'll be uh, in fact, I think I posted a video not that long ago. It was like seven minutes. So, but on average 30 minutes, because I do trading because I want the freedom of time. I want the freedom to be able to go and just use my time however I see fit. And yeah, if I can make $290 in 30 minutes, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's worth at least my time. I don't know, maybe you say that ah, 290 bucks in 30 minutes now, I, I, that's not worth my time. Cool, drop me a message. Like, what do you do for a living where $290 in 30 minutes is not worth your time? I'm happy for you, I'm not jealous. I'm just curious, like, what do you do? Like, iron sharpens iron. I, maybe, maybe there's something I can learn from you. But for me, 290 bucks in 30 minutes, I'm more than happy with it. And then before I go, real quick, a big request for me, especially if you like these videos, these videos, as you see, are not the easiest to make. I have to talk to you, I have to think for myself, I have to enter in my orders, I have to remember my orders, right? Thinking I had 1,500 shares when I only had 1,000. I have to think about what I wanna to alert to the chat room, I have to actually type up those alerts, I have to type in my own orders. Point being, there's a lot going on, these are not the easiest videos to make, but they are possible. So if you do enjoy them, if you would like for me to continue to make them, then two things you can do, very easy. Hit that like button, leave a simple comment. The comment can be as easy as a smiley face emoji. But those two things, hitting the like button, a simple comment, even if it's an emoji, communicate to me, Clay, yeah, please keep doing these videos. It's worth your time. It's worth the hassle at, at points to, to keep doing these. And I will continue to do them as long as I know that there's interest. So do those two things. And then also check out the channel as a whole. There's a good variety of videos, lots of other live trade videos, and uh, you know just a, a variety of videos. So check out that and hopefully you like what you see enough to hit that subscribe button as I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But yeah, get out there and uh, always keep an eye on, you know, what is your actual position size? But hopefully you all had a great day. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.